Okay guys, as I said at the start, it is all about how you can take a really randomly mundane photograph, one that you thought that would be really stonking when you took it, but when you got home is quite disappointing, how you can make that picture and turn it into something really special. So before I go any further, let me just thank each and every one of you who are subscribing to the channel. It's fantastic to have your support and it does tell YouTube that it's a channel worth promoting and so more and more people get to see it through you subscribing, giving it the thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, sharing it with your friends if you think that they would like to see it, and also adding comments, not just about the video, but for any ideas of subjects, topics, paintings that you'd like to see me cover in the future put them down there i'll read them i'll answer them and if i can do a video on it in the near future i will happily do that i love to help and also there is a patreon don't forget that the details of it are under this and every other video of mine that you see just snip on over there take a look at the tiers there are two new videos going on every month fully narrated full-length tutorials watercolors oils lots of other things as well there are already tons on there so you will not be sort of left thinking what am i going to watch tonight there's so much there to enjoy and learn from there is also a free um patreon community page on facebook which is just for my patrons where you can get help from me ask questions get answers seek advice and also interact with each other. So that's fantastic. And on top of all that, if that's not enough for your five or $10 a month, you can also tune in every Friday at 7 p.m. for a weekly live stream. I change the subject, I change the medium. It's always fun, so you'd be welcome to climb on board and watch that and get involved with that too. So with that all said and done, let us just get back to the topic in hand, which is all about how you can take a, um, mundane photo that you've taken that was a bit disappointing and look for the dynamics in it that you can create something from it that you can then put into a painting there is a little bit of video uh, computer footage on here which will show you some of the processes that i employ to uh, create some of that as well as maybe doing some some, some thumbnails let's get on when we go out painting somewhere and we have a camera in hand, we take lots of shots. We go out somewhere to a visit, we take lots of shots. Now, the thing about that is if you have all the right equipment, all the fancy lenses and cameras, you can get in a great position, you can get long focal lengths, and you can do all of these things when it comes to your photography. But some of us, and a lot of us, do not have all that equipment. Some of us just have a phone, and depending on the age of the phone, it depends on how good the sensors and the phone camera is. And also, we may have a much simpler device as a pic camera or a small portable camera that will take a very, very good job of taking photographs for memories and to a certain degree of scenes and information that we want. But when it comes to getting into the right position and to get a great picture, we take all our shots and when we get home, sometimes they are a little bit um, disappointing. We've all done it. We've all been there and I've got a whole pile of those sorts of photographs that I think, yeah, that'll make a great painting. And when I get home and I look at it, it really doesn't do what I want it to do. And so it gets discarded, forgotten, and consigned to the bin or wherever it may go, but never to find its way into a painting. So I thought that it would be nice to show you through some software how you can take a very bland looking photograph and change it into something a lot more dynamic. And I'm gonna do that on a couple of three photos and show you how you can take something that you may have discarded, may have lost interest in because it didn't come out the way you wanted. Or indeed, uh, the first one that I will show you now is of a uh, golden eye. I think it's golden eye or tufted duck. I'm not sure. I always get confused. Um, on the water and it's at a great distance and it occupies a very little area in the water and the photograph itself. Now, two things with that. One, I didn't have the focal length on the camera 
to get really close in on the bird and that was the first part but fortunately the size of the file that I took with my camera was decent enough that I could actually change the way that I see the picture so instead of disregarding the photograph I have brought it into a software called Lightroom which is an Adobe uh, software and there are many ways of creating differences like that and if you don't want to go into somewhere like Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop there are plenty of free ones out there that you can get involved with on your laptop your computers and indeed your phone if that's the way you want to be and you can also like photographic uh, software like Affinity Photo which costs you I think about a one-off payment of 25 30 pounds but you've got it for life and you can manipulate your photographs in there very, very simply and very easily. And you can actually then make a lot more out of the photographs than you may have already done. So I'm going to turn to this now and I've got Lightroom up and I have a window here of this particular duck. Now you'll see my cursor going around and as I'm looking at it, first thing first, if you are using Lightroom, quite simply change from the library tab here into the develop tab it will bring the image up to where you want it to be now there's a lot of information in here the bird itself I have to say is a little bit soft the photograph really centered on its focusing here now it was that far away that you know when you get to that such a small item in the photo it can be quite hard to pin the uh, photography at uh, the focus right down to a small amount but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to this here and just bring these little parameter bars you've got a lovely grid system there but look how we can suddenly change the dynamic on this picture we can move any of these anywhere you like you can actually do it like that now that to me uh, is not great it doesn't show the bird off as its best it's turning out of the photograph it's got very little room between here and here too much room here and there's not a lot of information very exciting going on here so we need to change this dynamic but already it is a much better picture than it would have been so let's just change this again let's come out and let's just move the photograph across to there a little bit maybe a little less maybe on the third this is what is great about these little squares and i think you'll find that in most software you get you could put something up like this but being a photographic uh, software per se uh, lightroom does ensure you get the golden mean the third quarter so that you can actually put the points of interest on these dissecting lines and give a greater degree of composition to the photography or the photograph you're playing with. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to put its eye right on that mark like that. But I think that is potentially just a little bit too low and there's a lot of information through here. So let's just take that up. Let's put him up a little higher. Still on that line, still on this line to the greater degree. But now we have a much more exciting image you can bring it down a little bit you can play around with this until you're really really happy with it now i don't know what that parameter is there size wise i can probably look over here on one of these uh, bits of information coming down here and i could probably figure out what that is but with that said i can always cut a board very very similar to that and get this sort of dimension now let me just click out of that and look how much more dynamic our photograph now is it's a much better image as I said the bird is a little softer but it will still come out with enough information I love all of this I love all of this now this one I'm going to be painting for the second uh, patreon video this month which would be the ten dollar um, tier so this will be painted or one similar to this will be painted but I just wanted to show you how that really does look by uh, taking that out now we can reset this and go back to this and we can make let's make a different one let us look quickly at taking the information again we're going to go into that and we're going to quite simply come down here and I'm going to move that in a lot closer to there still with a bird over on this side just a little bit like that and I'm going to bring this up this way like that 
Now, I really think that's an interesting, we've got enough inf information here to suggest that there's a wavelet and a line through here. We've got a nice dissection. The bird is still, I put the grid back on. We've still got the bird on that golden mean line as it comes through here. And then we've got enough information to add weight on the teardrop. And I guess that this will be something along the lines of maybe a uh, 10 or 11 by 14, maybe a 12 by 16, who knows exactly. But it wouldn't be far off if you created that. So I think that already we've taken a very, very simple, let's reset that again, a very simple image, which is otherwise you just wouldn't bother with that. But by looking into a certain area, saying what can I make of this image, can you create something like that? So let me just, um, I think if I come back to the library, I've already done a couple. And hopefully you can see there that I've come right tight in. This is going to be something like a um, 8 by 16 maybe, or an, uh, an 8 by 20 maybe, something like that. But how dramatic is that lovely bird right up on the crest there? And if I was to go in now with that to there, you'll see the bird is really up on the um, area of the uh, sort of thirds. Not quite, but I don't really want it any further this way. I think we're sort of sufficiently in the middle of it to make sure that it's good. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, and let's just come out of there very quickly and let's just go back to the library and let me just see. I did have another one, uh, not that one, not that one, this one. There we are. And again, you can see if I go back into here very quickly, back into there, you'll see how the bird is literally almost on those golden areas again we've got a nice bit of information at the front the one i showed you just now was maybe a little bit more information but again this is probably a oh, what about 12 by 20 maybe something like that um some sort of uh, very similar proportions but you can cut your board or prepare your board accordingly but i think that really makes a very dramatic uh, image as I say it's one of these I'm going to be painting let's just come out of there let's go back to the library and I did have this one now this one to me is a really pretty picture it's a grey wagtail and I forget where I actually took this one I believe it was at Dungeness the same as the previous one and it's got a lovely amount of foam from all this water that keeps coming in against the shore a nice bit of green nice bit of stone even a, a, a random feather that's been plucked out and discarded but I like this. I like if I go into the area here and I look at that and the bird is not quite on that third. So I could actually uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's come out of there very quickly. Let's come out of there. Uh, let's just look at how we may improve this. I looked at this and was going to put this in without doing too much improvement to it because I quite like what it suggests, but I could lower that down and I can't go this way too far I can't put the bird on the thirds because of the tail comes way out to here but I think that that is a much more pleasing uh, composition so what I'm trying to say to you is that by if you have a photograph and you have a digital photograph which is is obviously one of the best ways to record information these days is that using the file in some form of photographic software whether it be a free one or a paid version doesn't matter what it is really most of them will have the ability to put the photograph up and crop it in different ways and save the different crops for your own benefit further down the road so it's a case that you've got the photograph look at it see how you might change the dimensions or the dynamic of the painting or the photograph to do a painting from. Another way of doing it would be to do lots of thumbnails from the original. And it's still a great way to see how you might want to create the painting if you want to do. I'm gonna do a few of those in a moment, but in the short term, let's just carry on with this for a little longer. And let's come back to the library. I do like the way that looks, and I'm gonna save that for the future because I will do that gray wagtail. 
and I, that crop, re I mean, I really liked it before, but that crop has just lifted the whole thing. So let's just come back in and I did have a couple more. This one, for instance, a really nice painting, potential of oyster catcher. But as it stands, it really doesn't work too well. So let's just come back in. Let's just put it into the crop. Let's just see how we can change the dynamic. And I don't think it's going to be as great a dynamic change as we've seen, but I don't like that at all. So that I wouldn't even put in properly. I might put a small version in there, but that would be all. But now we have a much better look. Let's just put that on there. You can see that the bird is on that third, the important one. Let's just move that so that he is a little more. Uh, maybe just there so the eye is on the line take that off and look at that i think it's a really nice i said i'm not too keen on that it it plays too much of a problem here i would i may sort of something like that little bit there i might just put a small version in there so there is some green on the edge of the stone but we have a very very acceptable painting with a nice dynamic a nice two picture uh two birds in the picture we can make the diamond the di sorry the triangle we can make that triangular shape by putting a small piece of greenery down here so that we get a nice line coming down through here and a nice triangle back and that way we have that great compositional aspect so that's that part and i don't think i thought i had another one that i could just quickly go into and show you if i can find it very quickly there this is taking a landscape and not a bird. It's a lovely picture of a cloud. Fantastic. And I took a whole series of them. Now, the thing about landscapes and uh, seascapes, whatever, cloud forms, you can quite happily sort of come in and out of, of um, the uh, focal length on something. Even with a phone, you can pull it out and in. So you can really get that composition working for you in camera right at the get-go but if you get home and you feel that it really is a nice picture but it's not working then there's nothing stopping you coming into the uh, system like we've been doing go into the develop tab here and this is really nice as it sits but let's just see if we can make it a little better so first and foremost i'm going to bring the top down like that i'm going to make a much narrower composition and take that up a little bit so there and i'm going to first i want to get rid of that little annoying thing and there's a boat there. there's a little uh depth marker there so i'm going to get rid of that and then i'm going to bring this in a little bit more to there so we've got that set of clouds going off now let's just see what that looks like i think that's a much pleasing we've got a nice area of this cloud goes off the top of the canvas so it looks massive it looks more threatening for boating and we have a nice line coming down to what i would call the golden mean and the lines let's just look at that look at that the sun's not on it but that area there is right where we need it to be we can if we want to we can just pull it along a little bit but then the sun is too central so let's just come back this way if I wanted it really on the sun like that, I've got that in the picture, but of course I don't need to paint that. It may be that that is a little better. I'm not sure that it is. I'm going to go back to where we were, and I think that the line on there adds a little bit more drama, gets rid of that, and I think this is coming off nicely to the angle, and I feel that we have a much better composition to work with. So again, just by adjusting the photograph, what you see on the day is not always what you get when you look at it post in, in when you get home. Um, but uh, you can actually alter it in post and you can create something much more interesting to paint. So I urge you to not just take a photograph. And I have actually come off topic a little bit because I was the topic was taking a, a mundane or a photo that hasn't really performed for you and turning it into something more dynamic. And yes, that's still the message of this video. But in addition to that, look at all your photographs. Look at all the paintings that you are intending to work on for the future and see how you can manipulate them either this way on pieces of paper with little thumbnails 
or indeed digitally and just see how you can create something so much better. On that note, I'm going to leave you to it and uh, to ponder what I've been saying, to have a go at it, see if you can uh, put into action what we've been talking about. And I look forward to seeing you, each and every one of you, in the next video. Take care. Happy painting. Happy creating. Catch you all very, very soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Same.